welcome to Silent Life. In this video I'll be demonstrating my method for preparing rabbit skin glue size and traditional, that's to say non-acrylic, gesso. Gesso is simply the Italian word for chalk. In the context of painting it means a, a binding agent mixed with powdered chalk, sometimes referred to in English as whiting. Basically it's calcium carbonate in glue. Acrylic gesso uses acrylic glue, while traditional gesso uses rabbit skin glue, also known as glue size. This is an organic adhesive sold in granules, or more rarely in the form of small plaques of dried glue. The liquid glue is prepared by melting the dried glue in warm water. The ratio of dried glue to water will vary according to the task at hand, but for my purposes I use one part dry glue to 20 parts water. These quantities are measured by weight and not volume. Here I'm setting up my scales so that the weight of a small water container is taken into account. Once the scales are balanced, I measure out 1 20th of the water and then measure out the required counterweight of dry glue granules. The granules should then be left to soak in the full quantity of water for at least three hours. Leave them in there overnight if you have the time. They will take on the appearance of lumpy porridge, oatmeal. Um, the mixture should then be warmed up using a double boiler. Um, it shouldn't be allowed to boil, as this reduces its adhesive properties. It will quickly take on a regular liquid consistency resembling thick chicken soup and will feel smooth and sticky to the touch. The glue is now ready to mix with powdered chalk to make gesso. The ratio of liquid glue to chalk powder varies according to the job at hand. My gesso uses a simple ratio of one to one. The chalk powder I use is Blanc de Meudon, available in France, um, or sometimes I use half uh, Blanc de Meudon and half Lithopone White. It's important that whether you use pure chalk powder or a mixture of chalk and pigment, the ratio of powder to liquid glue should stay at one to one by weight. I set my scales carefully for this purpose. The powder will dissolve into the glue quite readily. Give it, give it a good stir and then strain it through a fine stocking to remove small crystals and other impurities. This is very important as these small gritty particles will be impossible to sand down to a smooth finish. The warm gesso should have the consistency of single cream. You can make it thicker if you want to speed up the process and apply fewer coats, but six to ten thin coats is better than three or four thick ones. Now this gesso is intended for use on rigid grounds. Um, it isn't sufficiently flexible to be used on canvas. A more flexible gesso can be prepared using an emulsion of water and linseed oil, but this isn't something I use, so I won't venture any advice beyond the suggested reading list at the end of this video. What I can share with you, however, is my method of applying gesso to a prepared panel. And this is no mean business, so I highly recommend that you have a look at the video, uh, a link for which is in the description below. Don't hesitate to subscribe if you'd like to see more of what I actually paint on this gesso. For now, thanks for watching and goodbye.